Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Justin Case. It was two years ago when Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin, state representatives and other local leaders in eastern Kentucky began recruiting a manufacturing company to come to the area. Today, that goal became a reality. Dodge Corp, a Canadian aluminum, aluminum manufacturing company, is coming to Perry County. They will be moving into the Coalfields Industrial Park and will begin production by the end of this year. I talked with several people who helped recruit the company, one that will bring hundreds of jobs along with it. About 260 full-time jobs. That's how many people will be hired locally to work at the new facility. It's a historic day for Eastern Kentucky. Uh, these jobs will require people not only from Murray County, but from surrounding counties as well as up to an airway who, who will commute to be able to work at this facility. Chuck Sexton also helped recruit the company, taking multiple trips to the company's facility in Ontario. He says one major reason why Dodge Corps is choosing Eastern Kentucky is because of the skilled workforce that is already here. Thankfully, uh, we were able to get them into the region a few times since then. Uh, to take a look at Hazard and Perry County. Uh, that seemed to be the right place for them. Uh, the community and the facilities there could meet their needs. Dodge Corps will move into the old American Woodmark facility inside the industrial park. Sexton says the company will make products for a number of growing industries. That's a huge growing sector and, and it really, it goes across multiple industries. So whether that's aerospace, uh, automotive, so both transportation related, light rail transit, another transportation related uh, piece. Local trade programs in the region are already training people for the jobs Dodge Corps will be hiring for. They will need CNC machinists, press operators, fabricators, and many others. They're going to be probably having about 10 to 12 different types of jobs, uh, different job descriptions, and um, so we're going to be working to get those folks on board to learn how to use the press because the press will be delivered delivered as soon as construction is uh, completed. Company leaders will begin hiring immediately. Job fairs will be posted on social media through the Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program. Not only is it great today for the families here, we've had a lot of families that's moved away that this may give them the opportunity to come back home. Dodge Corps is investing nearly $20 million as it moves into Eastern Kentucky. Local officials who will be organizing the job fairs say Dodge Corps will hire 50 to 60 people by the end of this year. Their goal is to hire up to 260 people over the next two years. A large fire threatened homes in Harlan County earlier today. This is drone video sent to us from a viewer. It all started around 1.30 and destroyed two outbuildings along Daniel Hill in Baxter. Along with it, the flames burned several cars. Judge Executive Dan Mosley said in a Facebook post, it spread to the mountain and put homes in danger. The cause of the fire is still unknown. A federal judge has struck down a Kentucky abortion law aimed at banning a common second trimester procedure to end pregnancies. U.S. District Judge Joseph McKinley ruled today that the law would create a substantial obstacle to a woman's right to an abortion, violating constitutionally protected privacy rights. A spokeswoman for the governor says their legal team will appeal. The ACLU says the ruling affirms that health, not politics, will guide medical decisions about pregnancy. The annual maternity fair was held today at primary care centers of Eastern Kentucky in Hazard. Expecting and new mothers fill the tent outside in the parking lot. This is the sixth year primary care and Hazard Appalachian Regional Healthcare partnered up for the fair. People who attended also had the chance to win prizes like diapers and chairs. We also want to let the public know about all the different programs that are available to them. Uh, let them know that they just uh, that help is there for them if they need it. One soon-to-be mom got a free delivery from ARH. Event organizers say this will put, they will put on the event again next year. It is typically hosted around Mother's Day. A federal judge says Kentucky school districts will have to turn over the names of teachers who forced recent sick outs so they could go to Frankfurt. It's part of an investigation by the state labor cabinet. The Bevan administration says teachers could be fined for participating in the protests. Attorney General Andy Bashir sued the administration to stop school districts from handing over records. He calls the ruling disappointing but says it is far from over. 
City officials met with staff at the Southeastern Kentucky Medical Center this afternoon. The Pineville City Council and Mayor Scott Maiden called an emergency meeting on Thursday to discuss the future of the hospital. Maiden says Friday morning hospital administration asked him to talk to employees about how they plan to work together and save the hospital, leaving many employees motivated to stay. Everybody's encouraged, uh, uplifting. Uh, we're on the right track with the mayor stepping in. Maiden says his goal is to have a full plan together within the next 90 days. Now to an alert from UK police about a new scam. Here's how it works. The caller says they are UKPD. They're an officer with UKPD and then asks for personal and financial information regarding a warrant for your arrest for buying narcotics online. And if you don't cooperate, he may threaten you or even try to arrest you or even threatens deportation. UKPD wants to stress tonight this is a scam. Even if the numbers look legit, you should never give out personal information over the phone. It was really another beautiful day here in the mountains. We saw a few clouds today, maybe a few rain chances here and there, but overall not too bad of a day. You'll notice that we reached a high of 79 at Jackson Day, usually around 73 for this time of year, so a little bit above that average. Low of 64 this morning definitely felt a little bit warmer as well. You'll notice that cloud cover has really been increasing over the past few hours. Few scattered rain chances, and we're seeing a little bit of backscatter from the radar there. You're seeing those temperatures starting to cool down as that cold front continues to push through the mountains. It has pushed through in that cooler areas on the way. You'll notice those upper 50s looking out to the to the west. The rest of us are interested about those low to mid 60s. So where's, there's that cooler air showing about 10 to 11 degrees cooler in Lexington and Louisville, even 13 in Richmond, and that'll continue to move into our area. So we'll see those rain chances continue this weekend as another system moves into the mountains. Sunshine returns as we head into the new work week, of course, and it looks like we're kind of nice as we head into that work week. I'll have those details coming up in just a few short minutes. Justin. Page, thank you. While Pike County schools finish a week of testing, one student is taking more serious tests of his own, one that relates to an illness that forced him to miss a majority of the school year. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more. We just really hope that you will heal in the name of Jesus. Community, courage, and Christ. Those are the three C's Belfry Middle School is holding on to as one of their own battles the worst C of them all. We found out that he had a uh, Cancer. Earlier this year, 8th grade student Matthew Bevins was diagnosed with lymphoma. The cancer has deteriorated some of his bones, making him unable to support his weight. The young pirate began chemo in March and has mostly been out of school as he battles the disease, and his classmates have certainly noticed. We wish he could be here to go on our 8th grade trip and graduate with us. We're all rooting for him, and we can't wait to see him freshman year. Today, while he was in Lexington for more scans, his classmates and teachers made sure his name was everywhere. They put signs on the fences and wore shirts to show their support, but students and teachers said nothing can fill Matthew's shoes. We love you, Matthew, and... Uh... And it's not the same being here without you. It's, uh, you know, he's real quiet in class, but, uh, man, it's just, you know, not his presence, not being here. Man, we miss you, buddy. And we really miss you. And we are hoping for the best, believing for the best for you. They're just praying it will be enough until he's back where he belongs. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. The school raised more than $2,000 in t-shirt sales to help offset Matthew's medical expenses. A prom on Saturday will allow students who cannot attend their school proms to still get to attend a prom. Suzanne Eaton says her daughter is a senior at Lynn Camp High School and because she forgot to turn in excused absences, her daughter was not able to, to attend prom. So they decided to have their own footloose prom. Eaton says thanks to several donations, kids from across the Tri-County area that are not allowed to go to their school's proms can still attend a footloose prom big outpouring of, of help and um, so we really appreciate it and it's just kind of turned into a community thing so we're excited so we hope the, the kids will get their special night and get those memories that they deserve. Right now they expect around 130 kids to attend the Footloose Prom. Students in Johnson County created a way to tour the city of Paintsville all from your smartphone. Students at Johnson Central and Paintsville High Schools teamed up to create videos around Paintsville of historic landmarks. All you will have to do is use your smartphone to scan a QR code and that will give you access to a video that will explain the history of that site. Um, those places would be, of course, the Mayo Mansion and the Mayo Church that John C.C. Mayo built, but also some historical homes that were built around the same time that John C.C. Mayo was building the mansion. 
Um, and so those are stops on the sites. Oxier says she hopes to have all the QR codes on different sites by September. The 34th Big Sandy Senior Games kicked off this morning. Today's big event was bowling. More than 100 participants from the Big Sandy region spent this morning seeing how well they could compete against other bowlers. But don't let their age deceive you. Strike after strike, these bowlers were scoring in the mid-200s. And for those of you who don't bowl, 300 is a perfect game. Although it's competitive, volunteers say it's like one big family. Yes, it is. It's like, well, also it's like a big community. Like some of these seniors don't see each other till this time of the year from other counties and they're uh, chatting, catching up, and they just love to see uh, people from uh, other centers. This is just the first part of the senior games. Next week starts the outdoor games. We'll have more on those when they come up. Still to come at 11, foreign policy tensions escalate with Iran. We'll have the latest details on the U.S. as the U.S. continues stark warnings with the Middle Eastern country. And clouds and rain chances increase as we head into those overnight hours. We'll break down the soggy weekend forecast in just a few short minutes.